It's Wednesday, which means it's time for our weekly environmental feature going green. Tonight, we look at deforestation and its impact on climate change. The Amazon jungle in South America, as well as all tropical forests worldwide, are considered to be the lungs of planet Earth. Yet huge areas are being deforested for cattle farming and soybean and palm oil production, releasing trapped carbon monoxide into the atmosphere. Joining us uh, for more on this, I'm joined by Bob Scholes. He's a professor in systems ecology at the University of the Witwatersrand. And Samantha Trolls, who's a communication representative for Forestry SA and the Paper Manufacturers Association of South Africa. Professor, perhaps we'll start with you. Deforestation rates in southern Africa's woodlands are said to be five times more than anywhere else in the world. So in, not in South Africa. South Africa, Africa is currently... Uh, for the last 50 or 60 years been afforesting. In other words, we have more forests now than we had in the middle of the last century. But the current arc of global deforestation is across the area of Africa reaching from approximately Angola through to Tanzania. And it's not in rainforests, it's actually in woodlands. A particular type of woodland we call the Miombo woodlands. And that's where the big changes are happening right as we speak. Talk to us about what afforestry and deforestation are. So afforestation is, as Prof said, it's the planting of trees. Deforestation is denuding the landscape of trees for urban development, for agriculture, without planting new trees. Mm -hmm. So the forestry sector actually, while they are harvesting continually and annually every year, they are also planting trees um, the same after they've harvested them on those tracts of land. What's that process like of getting rid of the forest and then building the new ones and how long does that take? Well a, a pine plantation or eucalyptus plantation and the prof can probably correct me but it's around seven to ten years rotation so it's pretty much like farming any sort of farming practice except the your rotations are a lot longer you know you're harvesting wheat annually or corn annually whereas with trees you're harvesting them after seven to ten years depending on what they're used for. And what sort of effect does that have on the South African environment, on the environment around and also the people who may be living close by? So if we're going to confine ourselves to South Africa, the impacts mm -hmm. are largely twofold. Uh, the first is that when we plant uh, evergreen, fast-growing trees into former grasslands, the amount of water which appears in the rivers decreases substantially. And that was a big surprise to everyone around the world, and South Africa was the leader in research on that topic. And we now know that to be the fact, and that's why we do not permit plantations to exceed a certain fraction of the landscape, otherwise there isn't water available for, for other uses. Mm -hmm. the, the other major impact is that sometimes the plantations occur into grasslands which were extremely rich in species, and you're replacing that with essentially a monoculture. And so we also have restrictions on where and what fraction of the landscape you can plant up in order to protect biodiversity. Let's speak about that word monoculture. It's come up and there's quite a large criticism of it. What is it and why is that criticism there? So monoculture is really just a portion of land that is dedicated to one single species. So in the forestry sector, it could be pine or eucalyptus and perhaps some wattle. But it's really one species per in the, this one section of land. Um, and then obviously uh, in forestry, we, what we're trying to do is try and mitigate those monoculture at landscape level by having um, protecting con areas for conservation. So a lot of the areas that are in the forestry owned land is reserved for conservation and biodiversity and to mitigate the impacts on biodiversity. So if you go into a planted forest in, in say in Pumalanga, you'll also find um, nearby um, areas of rich, rich uh, biodiversity and a lot of species conservation. There's lots of um, species that have almost reoccurred in some areas thanks to the, fo the efforts of forestry. So what, what effect does that have planting one specific thing? I know you've spoken about the biodiversity that, that's around it, but in that specific session, what happens to that soil? What happens to the ground that those things are planted on? So the answer to that is quite complicated. When you have lots of species in an ecosystem, that ecosystem tends to be a bit more resilient than if you just have a few species. Just imagine, for instance, you've planted a large area to just one thing and a, a particular pest comes in or a particular sequence of weather that it, it can't cope with, then you lose all of it. Whereas if you've got lots of species, they can compensate for one another a little bit. So you might ask, well then why do people only plant one species? It's largely because 
if you're harvesting out of an ecosystem, usually it's only one or a few species which are providing the, the, the value that you're looking for, and the rest, in a sense, are, are, are taking up space. And how that planting propagates then into diversity in things like in the soil and in the birds and in the insects, there's a sort of a knock-on effect there as, as well. And so you have to follow this all the way through the ecosystem. How would you then characterise the health of South African forests now? Um, yeah, I think uh, in Prof can back me up or not, <laughs> uh, but it's it's a good our uh, forestry sector is a, in a, a, a good space. Um, we do have issues around certain pests and diseases, which are um, as a result of climate change and just changes in, in, in temperatures in some places. But we're doing a lot of work to to try and mitigate that and and look at ways to treat these pests and diseases with ecologically sound methods. Um, a lot of work going into the t uh, pesticide um, projects and to make sure that things like uh, biological control, the Cyrex wasp, um, there's certain um, other insects that will prey on that particular wasp to help mitigate um, its da the damage it causes to the trees. Mm. When we began, we spoke about the health of Southern Africa deforestation Talk to us about that and climate change, how it's affecting the rest of the continent if South Africa is looking slightly better. So the big deforestation, as I say, is in woodlands, and that's the same around the world. We all hear about the Amazon deforestation. I've lived and worked in the Amazon. It's still there because the tropical rainforests are a horrible place to live in and do agriculture. They're too wet and the soils aren't good. So where the deforestation occurs is on the fringes in these drier uh, forest types, woodland types, which are on deep well drain soils. And that's what's happening in, in southern Africa. And that's being converted uh, largely into large uh, crops of um, maize and, and soybean, not to supply food in Africa mostly. It's mostly commodity exports being driven by dietary changes around the world. Mm -hmm. And that has negative impacts on our biodiversity. It's worrisome in the sense that all Africa's uh, major rivers, especially those that flow in the southern African area, all have their origins there. So the Zambezi and the uh, Kavango and the uh, and, and, and uh, you know the Ruaha all rise in this area. So there's a threat to that water resource, and uh, there is a net movement of carbon dioxide from being held in the bodies of those plants and in the soil underneath them, especially into the atmosphere when you convert the forest into agricultural lands. And when you add that up of an area as large as the belt that's affected, it can make you know, quite a significant difference to the global climate. Mm. Um, earlier on, we spoke about the effects uh, that monoculture specifically can have on rivers. Uh, the unexpected effect. We know that South Africa is a water scarce country. We had that big uh, drought scare, well, the big drought in Cape Town. How do you then mitigate this and what's the state of our rivers at the moment and how do you balance this uh, in forestry as well? Um, there's a lot of work being done to remove alien and invasive species. So in Cape Town there's been a lot of work to, to remove pine species and, and eucalyptus trees where they have may have sprouted in the sort of river, riverine areas. Um, I can't personally speak on, on the actual water health but there's also a lot of work being done on the wetlands to remove trees and have a buffer zone between the rivers and um, between the plantations and the rivers to ensure that we don't impact um, on the stream flow uh, any more than we do uh, in forestry. And we you know with there's it, forestry is a stream flow reduction activity, and it, it does it, they are not irrigated. Um, plantations are not irrigated, much like ag other agricultural crops. And so we get our water from the rain, but that rain then gets captured by the trees and gets soaked up by the roots of the trees, but, and then reduces what goes into the rivers, as Prof alluded to earlier. When we're speaking about climate change and deforestation, I've heard that that number is 1.5 degrees is the safe amount, uh, the safe temperature that we can rise every year if we're not going to have complete chaos when it comes to climate change. Are we doing enough, specifically in a South African context, um, to try and make sure that we're playing our part to make sure it doesn't go above that? So it's 1.5 degrees forever, not per year. And we're already about, uh, we're well over one already this year. So there's a very small margin of safety and basically the world has to turn the corner within the next 12 years if it's going to stay below 1.5 degrees Celsius. South Africa's contribution to that is very, very small. It's about 1% of the global forcing on the climate. 
but we're extremely affected by climate change. Our climate is already warmed up by more than 1.5. We're already warmed up by 2 degrees. We amplify uh, climate change here. So we're very vulnerable, but there's not that much that we can personally do about it. And that means that we have to focus our energy on moral suasion of persuading the rest of the world, guys, this is a really bad idea. Let's all get together and do something about it. I know you said there's not much you can do, but when you're reading up on climate change, people are saying you must make sure that you're using recycled boxes. When it comes to paper, there's specific paper you can use. Well, I think uh, uh, for as consumers, you just need to be responsible about where you source your paper. Look for symbols such as the Forestry Stewardship Council mark, the FSC mark, PEFC, and look for products that are sustainably sourced. Um, recycling your boxes, while it doesn't save trees because trees are farmed to produce paper, it does keep that carbon that's absorbed by the tree locked up in the paper for longer. So there are little ways that as, as um, citizens we can help mitigate um, our, our impact on the environment. And if we look at the African continent as a whole, uh, would, that, would that change at all? Would that answer be different? Yes, I think it would. You know, the big choice for the African continent is do we go down into this sort of, you know, deep, deep hole of degradation and then claw our way up the far side? And that may or may not be possible, given the state of the world by that stage. Or do we step across it? Do we learn from what's happened elsewhere and say, no, there is in fact a different development path. We, for instance, don't need to convert those woodlands uh, into endless maize and soybean fields. We could turn them into agroforestry, which is higher value more diverse uh, and better for that landscape. So we have choices which, fa which face us. We don't have to go the industrialization path which other continents have gone just because they went there. We can be smart about this. Thanks both so much for your time, Professor Bob Scholes from the Department of Systems Ecology at WITS and Samantha Tolls from Forestry SA and PAMSA.